Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis. First of all, my sincere apologies for uh, uploading this a bit late. Um, yesterday I recorded a Sunday video, but unfortunately the uh, video got a bit messed up, so uh, I had to re-record this uh, today. So, week ahead, uh, Monday the 23rd in the United States, attention will be uh, focused on critical data points, including the Q3 GDP growth rate, the PCE price index, and personal income and spending, followed by key metrics such as durable goods orders and PMI readings from the S&P Global Housing Market Health will also be assessed uh, through pending and home new home sales and internationally bank central bank interest rate decisions will be key with announcements from the European Central Bank and Canada flash services and manufacturing PMIs will be released in Australia, Japan, France, Germany and the euro area and the United Kingdom and Australia's inflation rate, Germany's LFO business climate and GFK consumer confidence. The UK's unemployment rate will also be closely watched. So lots going on this week. The main uh, highlights being the uh, Q3 GDP growth rate for the um, and the PCE price index for the US. Now, uh, we'll get into a bit more of that and looking at the, uh, the dollar index, which is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies. Um, I believe that the uh, dollar is still a buy uh, on pullbacks. Um, reason being, or one of the main reasons is that the economists or economists have boosted their US growth projections uh, and reduced recession odds. Whoever would have thought, right? There's a lot of doom and gloom around uh, what may happen with the dollar. But at the moment, it does look like the dollar is uh, economically uh, strong enough to keep rates high. So economists boost Q3 growth, growth projections on stronger consumer and Bloomberg survey respondents see higher rates for longer. And so um, it says economists have raised their US growth projections through early 2024 and trim recession odds uh, to a one year low as consumers continue to spend. And so if we zoom in a little bit more, we can see that Wall Street, it says Wall Street grows um, increasingly optimistic on outlook and it says here uh, from the September survey in Q3 uh, the economy was expected to grow 3% but now it's at 3.5% so um, interesting fourth quarter as well is, is, is growing a uh, first quarter as well so if the US actually do um, avoid a recession that should be uh, supportive of uh, for, for the uh, for the US dollar and although they might not necessarily hike rates, um, they're holding rates, potentially holding rates for longer. And so uh, that all kind of adds up to a potential stronger dollar. Now, doesn't mean that this week the dollar is going to go higher, right? No one knows week to week, but the overall uh, move should continue in terms of, uh, if you're looking at this from a trend from you know the uh, mid-July until now, we could see obviously pullbacks, right? People buying, investors buying for cheaper, um, you know, maybe taking some profit on the dollar at these highs. Um, and then any pullbacks, I think, are definitely buying opportunities. Um, and if prices go higher, then just look for pullbacks into demand zones before looking at going long. And that's just my bias, not necessarily financial advice, of course. So dollar still a buy for me. Uh, dollar yen, <clears throat> the dollar yen grinds higher, and as it grinds higher, there is still the chance of a Bank of Japan intervention at 150, meaning that the uh, Bank of Japan could step in to try to prevent their um, their currency from getting uh, more devalued. And you see here that the Bank of Japan may review yield curve control policy uh, as rates rise. So Bank of Japan officials are pondering the question of whether to tweak the settings of the yield curve control program as domestic long-term uh, interest rates float higher in tandem with those in the US and the Nikkei re newspaper report on Sunday uh, without saying where it obtained the information. And basically yield curve control is a central bank policy measure that um, is designed to devalue a currency. And so if they start to reduce or remove yield curve control, the effect of that should be that the currency will uh, or should appreciate. So <clears throat> at the moment, um, this is basically maybe what's preventing prices going uh, too much higher for now. Um, also as well, 
uh, you do have um, some some banks actually think that there should be uh, the, the dollar yen should go up to the one five fives, but it all depends on how quickly it devalues. If it's a slow grind higher, then the Bank of Japan may be a bit more tolerant. But um, if it's if it's a sharp devaluation, then there's likely to be some intervention and a, a potential change. And the fact that the Bank of Japan are talking about a change in yield curve control, there's some rumors. And I know there's been rumors for forever, but. <clears throat> The fact that they're getting closer to that deadline, um, I, I would say be definitely cautious of going uh, short in these areas. If I'm going long, I'd look for really pullbacks to 147.50s, 147 round numbers, 146.50s before looking at going long on that currency pair. Uh, the dollar Swiss, let's pull back to a nice area of demand which has some, uh, um, some confluence with uh, support and resistance. We've bounced off of this area here, which is the um, uh, 0.89 round number. Uh, in a risk-off environment, the both currencies will tend to uh, appreciate, but the Swiss franc has been the, uh, the dominant uh, risk-off currency when it comes to the three major risk-off currencies with the dollar, the yen, and of course, uh, the Swiss franc. So Swiss franc money's been flying into that, and you can see uh, that take place not really a pair that I'm interested in but if you do want to look for any kind of long trades then now is really the time uh, you could look for potential uh, more shorts but you'd have to wait for prices to pull back up into this supply zone before looking at getting short dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, in a risk-off environment, the uh, the the dollar the US dollar should want to strengthen over the uh, over the CAD. Yes, due to risk-off sentiment and uh, what's going on in Palestine and Israel. Uh, with Palestine and is in Israel, uh, you um, uh, commodities should uh, want to increase in value, but overall, from a risk sentiment perspective, you would think that the dollar should be the uh, dominant currency. So any pullbacks into demand zones would be where my bias is. Uh, so pullbacks um, is where we're looking at. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the, for the, for the uh, dollar CAD. If you do want to get short on this currency pair, um, then you are looking at just any moves uh, for probably from now, maybe up into these 138s, 139s. Also as well, just going back to the dollar a bit and some analysis, um, there, there could be uh, some uh, some risk off events and black swan events that do um, that can affect the dollar um, at some point but for now until that actually happens and until those uh, those events do uh, affect the dollar uh, I think the dollar is definitely uh, continues to be a buy so again the uh, the move any pullbacks I think are decent for demand zones um, to be a buy uh, dollar uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again, um, in a risk-off environment, out of the two, you would think the US dollar would be the one to uh, to strengthen, and it has been. Also, as well, last week, the uh, inflation report for the New Zealand dollar came out and was lower than expected, so lower than forecasted. <clears throat> so um, that took the rate hikes, the possibility of a rate hike off the table for now, which basically drove prices to the downside. So a uh, move up to this uh, 50, 0 0.59 uh, cent area, I think, is going to be decent for a uh, short trade or a move to the uh, uh, to the 60 cent area. Also, just be mindful of China. So if China do start to grow, they did have some decent news, but nothing um, so really that supportive. Uh, but if China do start to grow again, um, then that could be supportive of the New Zealand dollar. But until that data does support the narrative, I think... Um, you know the, the dollar is still the uh, currency to buy and also as well we if you are looking to be a buyer um, there is technically a decent level in and around the uh, 60 just where we are now matter of fact but um again you really have to expect either the dollar to get weaker or the um or the new zealand dollar to get stronger and i think my money's on the uh, us dollar getting stronger uh pound dollar so pound dollar there was uh, some data that came out wage growth easing um, in the UK and this is a sign of labour market cooling so private sector earnings growth also moderates to 8% in period and the Bank of England wage growth 
uh, for signs of persistent inflation. So UK wage growth slipped in the three months to August, indicating a cooling of labour market pressures that will make it easier for the Bank of England to keep interest rates on hold next month. So um, interest rates staying on hold um, is not necessarily you know supportive um, and even though it's it's up against the dollar who are likely to also hold rates there's a differential in terms of uh, the economy so there are stagflation fears for the uh, for the UK stagflation meaning that you have um, uh, higher inflation but a contracting economy so but if inflation is coming down, then that kind of um, uh, eases the pressure on the Bank of England to want to hike rates. But I think the US dollar uh, and the US economy is in a, in a better position and the Fed are in a better position than the Bank of England. So I think any pullbacks this week into these areas, I think are going to be nice opportunities to continue to look for shorts. Unless, of course, uh, things change around for the uh, the dollar in terms of maybe not some great news um and then you might look for want to look for a buy into in these areas. Looking at the uh, the uh, pound yen and in a risk off environment, you would expect the pound really to devalue against the yen. The yen hasn't really been acting as a as a risk off currency, and it hasn't acted as a risk of current risk off currency for a very long time, for a couple of maybe about a year or so. But um, it has its little um, I guess spells of risk off. Uh, really, it's been the uh, the US dollar and the, uh, and the Swiss franc so far. But I think um, the uh, uh, if I was looking to get short on this, it would be around these um, one eight three area, just maybe just below it towards this uh, this this high here, this re most recent daily high. But if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, the pound, then the first area to look for any kind of buyers would be the one eighty. 181s and then maybe down into the one 180s here and then the 178s those would be the levels that i would look towards um but from a risk off perspective you would think that any pullback should be shorting opportunities going to the euro dollar euro dollar um Definitely a pivotal week uh, for both. There is the European Central Bank uh, announcement and whether they're going to um, look towards hiking rates or at least be a bit more hawkish. Um, and so I think any uh, moves in this, uh, or I say moves, but any um, uh, opportunities to short, I think are decent. Um, there was an interesting article that came out, matter of fact, and it was saying that Europe's biggest money managers bet on higher ECB rate. LGIM, Vanguard and Rebecco uh, anticipate an additional tightening and warn on front end debt. See Italian spread spreads at risk from hikes. And so some of the biggest money managers in Europe say traders are wrong to bet the European Central Bank is done hiking rates. Um, as a net energy import of the region is particularly exposed to rising prices if the crisis in the Middle East escalates and markets are underestimating the possibility of additional tightening in response to accord in response according to legal and general investment management Vanguard Asset Management and Robeco uh, Group. That leaves short maturity uh, government bonds particularly vulnerable and this clashes with swaps pricing that shows a pause from the ECB virtually baked in this week and only 10% chance of a uh, 25 basis point hike at a subsequent meeting in the US swaps show a 40% chance of another quarter point hike from the Federal Reserve so you can see the difference in what the market is thinking of course the market can be wrong and if it is then it will re then it will reprice but um one of the reasons why and i'm not necessarily you know um want to go against uh you know europe's biggest money managers of course but um uh, one of the sticking points in the reasons why the european central bank or the market is really thinking that they won't hike rates is because um well one of the reasons is germany as well Germany's year of frailty is seen ending in double dip recession. So hiking when you've got um, Germany, which is Europe's economic engine, potentially going into a recession will only make things worse. So it says here Germany won't escape a second recession this year as the economy long seen as Europe's motor limps through persisting industrial weakness, according to forecasters. So, um, yeah, it doesn't look good for Germany at the moment. And so um, that's the reason why the market is um, thinking that they will 
potentially hold uh, rates. But of course, if inflation comes in uh, higher due to uh, higher energy costs, there is obviously uh, the possibility that they could start to hike rates. But um, we'll see what the, what the European Central Bank says this week. And if it is a bit dovish, um, then you, you're likely to see prices move to the downside. If uh, you know prices do come up to the 106s, 107s, I think that's still going to be uh, shorting uh, opportunity or territory. I do think that's a really nice area to look for um, some short trades. Unless, of course, the European Central Bank are really, really hawkish and there's some really good data that comes out of Europe supporting uh, rate hikes for the economy. Euro, yen, and again, euro, yen, drifting slightly higher um, this week and it depends upon obviously what happens I think in a risk-off environment the yen should be the uh, currency to strengthen uh, but at the moment that, that doesn't seem to be happening and um, and if, but if you do want to be a buyer of the of the euro I would say basically a pull back to this area where you have a level of support at the end of a decent demand zone that's led to a new high I think that's the, probably the first area to look for any kind of long trades. But my bias personally would be to actually look for some short trades um, in and around these highs. And let's see what happens around uh, there. Euro uh, pound, Euro pound again, a really nice, accurate and obvious level in a supply zone. Um, that is brilliant. So technically, but again, fundamentally, the both currencies are a bit... Um, uh, difficult to read because they're both both central banks are holding rates and they've both got their economic problems as well so um although this is a nice short this could just be profit taking i know probably a lot of traders ended up going uh short here on that daily pin bar on a friday but that could just be end of the week uh profit taking right but let's see i think the pound may have a slight edge over the bank of england um but um but yeah I would really kind of uh, expect prices to potentially move to the downside depending on what happens with the ECB. So I think definitely looking at, um, you know, this week where you've got news that could potentially move the market, that's going to be it's going to be a, a turning point based on what happens fundamentally. If you are looking to buy the euro, then a, a bit of a pullback into this demand zone here is going to be a decent area to look for some long trades. Uh, Aussie dollar and the Australian dollar against the US dollar, you would think you know the US dollar would be the stronger out of the two, and it's proven so you know <clears throat> so at the moment. So a pullback into the highs of this demand zone, the, the just under the uh, 64 cent area or up to the uh, 64 20s will be where you want to look for the potential uh, for short trades. I think that is the zone right there. Yeah, so that's where we are. Um, again, to buy the Australian dollar, um, there are currencies that you could probably buy it against, but I wouldn't necessarily against the US dollar. So, um, but there is a nice technical level uh, we can see here that's kind of bounced off it. But the more times the level uh, uh, touches and gets rejected and re revisits and tests, the weaker it does actually become. But again, it depends on what's happening this week with regards to um, some news, which we have uh, inflation rate year on year. The forecast is for 5.3 percent. If it comes out at 5.3, it will show that inflation is coming, is going lower, which then um, basically takes rate hikes off the table. But if it comes in higher than forecast, then that may uh, prove uh, that the inflation is a bit stickier and the Australian Central Bank, the RBA, may have to uh, continue hiking rates or hiking rates at least one more time to try to get inflation down um, to their two percent target and of course we have uh, fed chair pal speaks on, on 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 these days as well gdp growth rate as well as uh, personal spending and core inflation so lots going on this week um and then the australian dollar japanese yen again risk off environment you think that prices should want to fall uh right now and any pullbacks should be potential buying opportunities for the yen um I think of any kind of reversal may happen at these uh, 93 area just below that. But again, that would probably have to be driven by uh, less risk off and also as well China uh, growing. So decent areas to look for 
potential uh, buy trades. There is a level at the 94 round number as well that you may want to look towards uh, uh, seeing if there's any intraday um, opportunities to buy the Australian dollar if you think that the Australian dollar is going to be a bargain down here. But I think in a risk off environment, the yen should want to be, you know, strengthen. And also, uh, finally, the uh, gold. So you've got gold against uh, the dollar rising and rising. And um, last week we did have, I think, a supply zone around here, but prices basically just broke through it. And as I always say, uh, there's no technical level that's going to stand in the, in the way of fundamental analysis and risk sentiment, as that's what really drives the market. So any pullbacks into um, this demand zone, I think, is going to be a really nice um, uh, uh, trade technically. Also, as well, um, I know many traders do um, uh, think that gold and the US dollar are uh, uh, basically uh, inversely correlated. If gold goes up, the dollar should go down. And if you know gold goes down, the dollar should go up. That doesn't happen all the time. Um, but in certain environments, the uh, gold is obviously a safe haven asset, but also the dollar is a safe haven currency. So you can get um, situations where gold and the dollar can go up and um, in a risk on environment where money comes out of the dollar into commodity currencies and also uh, comes out of gold into you know and goes into stock markets and the and bonds where they can get a higher return and, and yields gold goes down as well um, and so um, yes we do know that they do inversely correlate but also as well there are environments that you need to be aware of where both uh, can be buys and both can be sells so just because you know you're going to go long dollars um, doesn't mean you should short gold if you're going to go long gold that you should short dollar um, because in an environment that we are in now um, both can actually uh, increase uh, in value but um, if you are looking at gold in a risk-off environment it's just a case of uh, will this appreciate more than the dollar will in this environment so yeah i think that's the really nice area to look for any kind of long trades and if you are looking for short trades um, in anticipation of maybe some pace or de-escalation in um in, in the gaza strip then uh really this is the this is the probably the time now or maybe just above this area at these highs right here anyways guys that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed the analysis again apologies for it being late and um i hope you have a great trading week take care